Hello everyone. I'm Matthias Krings, a senior partner and a co-founder at Catanion. I have been a consultant in biopharma for almost 25 years and I have a PhD in biology in the area of human evolution and molecular evolution. In this video, I would like to present Catanion's experience with an important element of leading an R&D driven biopharmaceutical enterprise in the desired direction, therapeutic area strategy, and what's more, a very useful approach called disease mapping. Let's have a brief look at the overarching fabrics of all enterprises. All companies are guided by values and beliefs, explicitly or implicitly. Values and beliefs in turn influence the goals a company sets for itself. Strategy is then a roadmap and guidance how to reach the goals. These goals will guide investment decisions and such. Let's now assume the enterprise in question has defined one or several therapeutic areas they want to engage in. A strategy then needs to define where to play and where not to play within each of these TAs. And apropos, the where to play part is of course the therapeutic area strategy for the TA in question. The where not to play part is the white space part, the complementing piece if you wish, which we will address a little later. Here's an overview of the approach to establishing a therapeutic area strategy we have taken with many organizations, each time tailored to the specifics of the company. Catanion's key blueprint steps are expectation setting and scoping, creation of a customized TA database, the option space, attractiveness of indications in the option space is then assessed by in-depth indication reviews. Next is an assessment of internal capabilities. Then we arrive at the disease map, essentially a bullseye graphic of core adjacent watch and wait. And what's not in it is called white space indications. Let's zoom into each of these steps now. First, expectation setting and scoping is about defining what the boundaries of the TA should be. As you know, TAs tend to overlap. Next, which dimensions will have what relative weight when prioritizing indications later in the process? These dimensions typically fall into three categories. Feasibility, unmet medical need, and commercial potential. Once this is defined, the next step is the creation of a customized therapeutic area database to establish the option space. To this end, our data scientists and consultants have combined and curated state-of-the-art databases covering scientific literature, patents, investments, partnering levels, as well as industry pipelines covering some 10,000 indications and disease terms as well, both orphan and non-orphan. Catanion's indication database is called Indicat, and it contains more than 3,000 indications with any R&D pipeline activities. Now, excluding all out-of-scope TAs and trimming the boundaries of the TA in question establishes the initial option space, in essence, a very long list that is then manually curated and informed along dimensions such as competition, business development substrate, market size, genericization, number of publications with specific keywords so as to arrive at a ranked list. As a next step, the attractiveness of indications in the option space, given the above rank, ranked list, is covered in somewhat greater depth along some additional dimensions, which typically are scientific rationale and scientific confidence for pathways and targets and such, unmet medical need, development feasibility, competitive intensity, market opportunity, and business development opportunity. So, now we have covered the external opportunity for the indications in the TA in focus. That's all nice and dandy, but it's only one part of the equation. Based on our 25 years experience, it is actually pretty important to assess the internal capabilities as well. Because this is the starting point of the organization in the TA in question. We suggest to assess the complete organization covering the entire biopharma value chain. Because after all, Proper positioning in any TA requires all pieces to do their part well and work together seamlessly. Which are these pieces? Research, building capability in terms of scientific expertise and experience, availability of modalities and platforms, disease models and pharmacology, academic and biotech alliances. Development in terms of 
CMC, that is manufacturing and formulation, non-clinical and clinical expertise, KOL and investigator networks, regulatory expertise to name a few. And of course commercial with regard to pricing reimbursement, market access, launch excellence, marketing and sales force, etc. When this is done, it's straightforward to consolidate external opportunity assessment with internal capabilities in a very simple matrix. It provides the rationale as to which indications are already fully supported in all parts of the organizations and which ones still have some way to go. This matrix helps to position the indications into core, where we have high external attractiveness and internal capabilities, adjacent and white space where we have lower external attractiveness and or lower internal capabilities. Then as a next step for communication purposes, the disease map, the bullseye can consolidate results of external and internal analysis in a single compelling graphic by zooming out of the matrix we just used. It allows to understand and communicate areas of core adjacent and watch and wait indications. Indeed, some of our clients had posters of their disease map in their meeting rooms across the organization for a while during the rollout of new therapeutic area strategies until everyone in the organization had completely ingested and accepted the new focus. The bullseye is of course self-explanatory. The complement, everything that's not on it, is also worthy of some consideration. Remember, we said we would come back to the white space around the disease map. In fact, many biopharma organizations appreciate that there may come a time for growth and expansion. This can happen within the disease map or outside of it. In order to prepare for casting the net wider, so to say, some prepare by exploring and structuring the white space further by identifying indications or entire TAs that are relevant to monitor. This could be due to, say, relatedness of the pathophysiological mechanisms, the molecular pathways at play in some core indications that are also found in the white space, or it could be due to a particular fit of certain technology platform and modalities in the specific part of the white space. And identifying these parts and specifying what is in them and what is not is crucial so as to avoid an unguided expansion. Yeah. Oftentimes expansion into the white space parts cannot happen with the same effort, resources and costs. And the timing may not be ripe immediately. And as such, these white space islands of interest are often referred to as novel and emerging approaches. Um, if they are to be pursued with internal capabilities or they're sometimes referred to as watch and wait areas if they are to be sourced from outside by say partnering or business development licensing. So to conclude, why is this exercise useful and who will benefit from it? Corporate leadership benefits because of clear direction setting, decision making guidelines and an instrument for very clear communication. The entire organization benefits because there is a uniform message as to corporate goals and focus. Portfolio management will be happy to use this. R&D project prioritization and budget allocation will follow certain guidelines. And of course, capability and excellence build up in different parts of the organization. Let's have a closer look as to which these parts are. Research deals with early identification of programs that are compatible with core indications. Of course, research should always follow the science and if the science leads a team to a core indication on the disease map, great, no further questions asked. If science in turn leads to an adjacent indication, that may require a trade-off discussion if resource constraints apply. And if the science leads to a white space indication, then it will be very clear very soon that this cannot be pursued fully internally and a plan needs to be discussed rather sooner than later as to whether this should be stopped or externalized. And of course, development, building and hiring expertise in the indications in question and establishing a network of KOLs, investigators and patient advocacy. And finally, commercial, establishing sales forces and prescriber relationships in the indications pursued in the TA. 
last but not least, business development um, licensing and M&A will start building relationships with potential future partners uh, for in-licensing or out-licensing. So, in brief, this is Catanian's blueprint approach to therapeutic area strategy and disease mapping. Interested? If so, please connect with Catanian today to learn more.